Uh, hey guys, hope you well. Monday, straight after the Easter break and uh, it's been manic as always. Today it's been not too bad. We've done about four or five projects over the Easter break and fingers crossed, not major any issues. I mean, when we do a project, we pretty much do a quality assurance check and we try and mimic what the teacher will be experiencing. So we try and minimize disruption. The core factor is, you know, you log onto your machine, you get access to the resources you normally get access to. You're able to print, you're able to get the internet. And for example, if you're a teacher using an interactive whiteboard, you could obviously see the whiteboard, the display is fine, and you can interact with the whiteboard as well. If you're an admin staff, you get access to your resources, print internet yeah that's pretty much it realistically and it doesn't really matter what your project is those are the experience needs to be the same when the end user comes in so we've done replacement switches and access points as well you have to make sure those jobs are done properly because they're not going to really mess about with those all they're going to do is come in and log onto the pc or log onto the laptop and get access to the work and start to deliver the curriculum or start to do some administration work so yeah so that went okay i mean the big biggest hiccup this morning was London Grid for Learning, the internet provider, they went down. They had a major outage in like a few of their data centers and it affected pretty much a lot of schools in Enfield, Haringey, Brent. I mean, it is a lot of schools in London, basically. The downtime wasn't too bad. It was about an hour. But yeah, if you could have picked the worst moment to do it, that would have been it. Everyone's coming back, first day back and bang. And then you have a lot of people who are anxious and they are, you know, want to prepare before to make sure the lesson's on point and etc. And then bang. <laughs> <laughs> so my phone was going off, you know, to say, oh, they, can't get, they couldn't get any internet access. I think when I got two or three calls from schools, I realized it was an LGFL problem. And what I normally do, I notify the team. So everyone within the team knows. So then therefore, if questions are asked to them, they're fully aware. And then obviously I try and get in contact with um, LGFL. Obviously their lines were crazy, but they do have like a Twitter page and they also do have um, an LGFL page where therefore I could get updates as well. So, and it's just a waiting game until they get everything resolved and, it's, and you know, everything's working and it's back up and running. So yeah, it was only, a, the longest has been, it's been a downtime of an hour and they're pretty quick turnaround when it comes to a problem. Okay, so yeah, this week is going to be manic and um, yeah, let's get moving. Well, sorry, let's keep it moving. Hey, another day, another school. Very interesting, this one. There was an installation last week in the school where they were installing the new phone system, voice over IP system. The problem was that the phones which were using PoE, power over the internet, where they're plugged into a specific switch, the switch wasn't picking up, wasn't on the same network as the rest of the school. It was on a separate network, like an isolated network. So the IP addresses were different. So it wasn't talking to each other. The company which done the phone system or doing their site survey didn't test the ports to check. They just assumed that the switches were all doing the same thing maybe they thought it was a flat network and what a flat network basically means is that there's no configurations and the switches are in the same IP range yeah I'll quickly show you two switches and also this switch is not a power of Ethernet switch it's just a standard gigabyte switch this one here is a power of an Ethernet switch this one was configured to the Wi-Fi system that they have in the school so they isolated the Wi-Fi systems so when users log on they're unable to get access to the main network which is a good security feature but they didn't need to necessarily isolate the switch all they need to do is isolate the Wi-Fi and then therefore you would have been able to use the rest of the ports on the switch because there's a PoE switch for that so the Wi-Fi network the Wi-Fi access points were all plugged into the PoE switch and that was the only thing plugged into the real PoE switch and there was only one there's a one form entry school there's like maybe 10 or 11 access points and you've got like three or four switches around the school which were only used for Wi-Fi but then there were still like ports available which you couldn't use because it was isolated on a network and obviously the phone company which came in last week realized that obviously assumed it was one flat network they could plug and play and then realized no it's isolated so what i'm doing at the moment is resetting all these switches resetting the the PoE switches so they could use them instead of them buying a replacement switch for these ones which is on the correct network you might as well reset these ones plug them and then connect these two together so there's a link a daisy chain link and then this will be on the IP 
range where it should be the same IP range of the phone system. But the only downside to that is that I would have to reset the access points because they, they were isolated originally. And you're probably thinking, why do I have to reset the access points again? Because they're already here. Well, no, the access points were managed by the previous MSP provider. They were obviously using Ubiquiti, which is great. And Ubiquiti have a cloud-based system as well. So a cloud-based solution where you can manage the devices cloud. And they're kind of pushing for that anyway. They were not going to pass over the credentials to us. What they said, well, to Queen Technologies, who's taken over the school. So what they suggested was we set them from scratch. Now we hadn't had time to do that originally, but now it's been forced upon us to do so. This is it. I made the school purchase a Ubiquiti cloud key. This is generation two. Unboxing. I always wanted to do this unboxing stuff. Let's see. Uh... Paperwork. U for Ubiquiti or Unify or Universe. Uh... And this is the device. Now, to my knowledge, I don't think they're going to be doing these devices anymore. Plastic on it. I'm going to do the plastic. Cool, so what I'm hoping for is that, which I know is not gonna work, but I would love it to work, is that I don't need to go to all, every single access point and reset it because that's time consuming and I don't have much time, but knowing my luck, it's the case. Okay, cool, here you go. And it's got like a little GUI interface. You've got ethernet port, two USB-Cs, SD card just above the ethernet port, and you've got a power supply. Power over ethernet, that was ETH. All right, so let's plug this in. This is plugged into a POE switch. And we're gonna plug this in like that. And then something should happen, some lights. Here we go. See it? Lights and the U. Cool, so I'm gonna stick it in this cab. Ugh. I need to now, I could do it two ways. I could scan the QR code or I could kind of look for it on the old internet browser. Yeah, what was I saying before? To be honest, if I knew the password, if they set up passwords to get access to the access points, I think I should be able to do all these remotely. But since I don't, and the previous provider are not being very cooperative, it's doing things from scratch again. So we're going to basically, okay, cool. We're going to probably do it from Good morning, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. That's good, that's good. Okay, sorry about that. A lot of interruptions. <laughs> so I'll show you, it's up and running, okay? Yay. Now, as you can see on my screen, I was able to find the IP address, type in the IP address and then follow the wizard and then set up the gen key. It's found the access points, which is great, wonderful. Now, if this device was previously managed or another console, you can reassign the device in the network mobile app or perform an advanced adoption using the device credentials set in its original network instance under network device authentication or restore the network application to a past configuration that the managed device is. If these are not previously being managed, I swear perform a factory reset and then re-adopt. This is what I have to do. So I need to find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have to find twelve because I don't know what the credentials are to do a cloud reset, basically. So yeah, so that's me basically resetting them one by one. Okay, let me crack on and do that. Yeah, let's keep it moving. Should this turn to the right? All right, so we're just resetting it. Oh, that was a pain. Couldn't really get close to it, so I could show you what I did, but there's a button in there. So I use this to reset it. Flashes a few times and voila, it's reset to default. So just seeing if it's picked up HD then I'll add. Yeah, it has picked it up. So it's going to adopt somewhere. Okay, there's only 11, so okay. So it's adopting. Taking log. The network, the default, the third party gateway router. See if I can create another one. That's not giving me the option. Let's grey that. And then let's come out of that. Remove that. I think we'll be here all day. Hey guys, hope you're well. The another school, same day. <laughs> what day is it today? A Wednesday. Okay, finished the Wi-Fi and phone setup in the other school. It was a pain in the bum because I had to go to every single access point and reset it. But it is what it is and we got it working. I think I'm running out of data, which is not good. A few minutes later. 
And we're back. Just had to clear up, or sorry, I had to delete some footage on the camera. Anyway, this machine is an old laptop. Member of staff wants to use it. So it's Windows 10 and it's connected to the domain. And I don't know what the password is, um, the local password for this machine, but it's connected to the domain. What the domain is, is it's a network environment on Active Directory. Yeah, if you don't know what Active Directory is, check my previous videos. I explained to people what Active Directory is. It's basically an environment where you hold users and computers and manage the network infrastructure within schools or any organization or any network you want to do. So what way do you go about doing this? Resetting the password basically. So how do I do that? I use a software called HBCD or that's the abbreviation, but it's called Heron Boot. Heron Boot, it's a free open source software. There's many softwares, hackable software, but this is something I use. ISO, put it on my bootable hard drive and I boot into that operating system. So I look for the user account and reset it or set a new password for myself. So I'll just quickly show you what I do. So plug this bad boy in. And this is pretty cool because you could actually boot up. You could dump all your ISOs on here and you could change between booting up in ISOs or you could use it as a, an external hard drive uh, it gives you a little module so you can change between the two it's a great tool love it i'll put a link in the description if you guys want to you interested in purchasing this don't get me wrong it's nothing to do with an affiliation with me just helping people out there all right cool so i've selected the iso and as you can see it's called hbcd it's an abbreviation for heron boot so what i need to do is boot the operating system into the uh, heron boot software so laptops so it will be slow slow Slow, slow. HP F is F9 to boot into bootable options. So I'm basically gonna navigate to USB CD ROM, which is in this device below. Here we go. Press enter and press enter again. Now it should be booting into the Heron Boot operating system. Taking a little while. That's what we do. All right, this is the software. It's got tons and tons of utilities, tons and tons of tools. Download it, have a play, it's really great. But what I'm using this for is to basically hack the password. All programs, security, passwords, and we're gonna go into, which one is it, network. NT passwords. It locates the SAM config file, which holds all the usernames and passwords. Uh, press open. So you look for the default local user account, admin one. So it's either this one or that one. It's this one. Press change password. I'm just gonna give it any password. Press save, press exit, press restart. And then that's it. So it's booted up successfully, which is great. As in it's booted up. And let's see now if the password I set it will work. So look, please fingers crossed. Yay! So as you can see, it's working. It will work. The welcome will mean that it will go in and I'll be able to disconnect it from the domain, reset it and give it to the member of staff. That's just a quick way of resetting a password. It's all based on tools. Everything's based on tools. So what you have, look. See, look at this. I'm a hacker. Ah, okay, cool. Let's keep it moving.